Wednesday, Adobe released a new update to Creative Cloud that has a bunch of really great new features. So today, we're gonna take a look at some of my favorites. The main new features that have me most excited are in Premiere, so we're gonna jump right in there with possibly my favorite update, which is the ability to have multiple projects open at the same time. I think Premiere is now the only NLE that actually does this, though I could be wrong. And the last time I was able to even do this was in the old version of Final Cut. And for what we do, this is really massive. So now, for instance, when working on Film Riot, given that this is a recurring show, there's a lot of stuff that we always copy over from the last episode. So I have these two projects open here and the timeline from an old episode here and a new one from this new project right here. So now I can grab the things that will carry over like the opening bumper and drag it right over to our new timeline. And once I've done that, it populates that media in the new project. I really wish I would have had this when I was editing that Ghost Recon short for Ubisoft and my friend Avi Uabi. And I had most scenes as their own projects so that I could work with them easier without my main project getting insane, then I brought them all together in the end. This would have made that process 1,000 times easier with being able to pop open and close whatever project I needed instead of having to close out what I was in and then open up another scene just to jump around. And that's a great example of what a lot of these updates are. They're very practical updates that will help me do my work faster and easier. A smaller update that's practical and possibly underwhelming to some but so exciting to me is the new color labels. We used to only have eight labels, now we have 16 and not only that, we're able to custom pick the colors that we want. When I'm working on larger projects, I love to stay extremely organized and labels are a big factor in that for me. So this one is actually one of my favorite new features. Then we have closing gaps, which is something that is long overdue. Often you will find that you have a lot of gaps in your edit that you want to be able to close quickly and easily, but there wasn't really a simple solution. But now you can either just come up here to sequence without anything selected, then click close gaps and all the gaps in your timeline will be deleted. Or you could select a specific range and do the same to just that affected area. Another piece of awesomeness is shared projects. You can create a new shared project that multiple people could be working on. Once you have that, you can come up to preferences and project locking, and you can set that and name your edit bay. And then you can lock the project so it's read only and no one can make any changes. You can also add additional shared projects into one project so that one person can be working on one thing, another on another, and you could both be sampling from each other. Josh and I do this with every episode, but the way that we have to do it now, it's a little frustrating. With this update, we're gonna be able to keep it all in the same project and nice and streamlined. Moving on again to the essential graphics panel, some great updates here too, like responsive design. For instance, let's say I create a simple lower third, all inside of essential graphics panel. Then I add an in and out move with keyframes. Now before the update, if I wanted to change the length of this lower third clip, I would have to go back in and change the keyframes as well. But now I jump into the panel and right here under responsive design, I can set in and out duration that will create an area to lock in. So since my keyframes at the beginning and end are only a few frames long, I'll add that here. And now when I adjust the length of my clip, the in and outs remain the exact same without me having to do a thing. Then we have responsive position. So say I wanted to use the same clip for a social media post and I didn't want it to leave at 16.9. All I have to do is click on each of the elements, then under responsive design position, I select the frame, then I'll click the left and bottom sections to pin each to the bottom left of the frame. So now if I jump over here and change my sequence settings to be one by one, Adobe automatically adjusts the positions for me so everything lines up perfectly. Or you could pin elements to each other. Say I wanted this back shape to follow this text instead of redoing the keyframing, I can select the center point here and then pin it to the text that I want it to follow, and there you go. You could also see right here that they brought back the credit roll, which is great. Then over here, another change that makes my soul happy is the new font menu. This one was definitely due for an update. It's much more coherent, and you can now set fonts as favorites to find them more easily. And the last thing that we're gonna look at in here is Adobe Stock. Of course, you have access to Adobe Stock right inside of Premiere, but now you can also access a lot of design templates that can be used to customize right inside of Essential Graphics Panel. So you can type what you're looking for, then buy and add to your project, so even if you aren't the best with design, you can still get something solid going for your project. And it's the stuff like that, the things that cut out the steps that I have to take to complete a task that make me a big fan of Adobe and what they've been doing. Of course, one of the biggest advantages of the Essential Graphics panel is the integration with After Effects, but we'll get into that in another episode. For now, break, then we talk audio. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, or innovator, Domain.com is a place to go when that next great idea hits you. When you buy a domain name from Domain.com, you're taking the first steps in creating an identity and vision for your brand or idea. And the world's top two premier and most recognized domain name extensions are .com and .net, which means those are the ones that are going to help you build your brand and expand your presence online the best. And as always, Domain.com is giving you 25% off when you use the coupon code FILMRIGHT when you get domain names, web hosting, and email. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com.
Logo. Next up, we're going to look at Adobe Audition. One simple update here is how you can work with crossfades. With two clips overlapping in a crossfade, you can hold either Alt, Shift, or Command for different effects. Holding Alt, then clicking and dragging will give you a symmetrical fade. Controller Command will change the fade shape, and Shift will adjust the duration and retain your shape. Simple, but will definitely help you move more efficiently. Of course, we have the essential sound panel in here. With this, I can select my clip and then tag it to show what type of track it is. For this one, it'll be dialogue, and this one's gonna be music. Music, and this will help me out with what I'm going to be doing going forward. Like if I'm using one of the coolest new features here, auto ducking, if I click on my music clip, I can now go into auto ducking here, select what I want to duck against, which in this case will be the dialogue. And then here I can adjust my sensitivity, the amount of reduction and the speed of the fades. And that's it, it's set. So over here you can see a visual representation of what it's actually doing. And what's great about this is it's dynamic. So if I were to move the clip up here, you could see the adjustments happening down here. And it sounds something like this. What are you doing? Yes, you will. I'm recreating the scene from Logan. Charles, it hurts! You don't have claws. Stark's gonna put him in in post. It's gonna look really sweet. All right, Stark. This is something that I would usually do manually with sends and compressors, but this is doing the same thing and just much easier. Of course, this example was more extreme to show exactly what it is doing. Normally, it would be very slight and subtle just to help your dialogue punch through the mix. But I'm also hoping this will be really good for when working with sound design, but I haven't tried that sort of workflow out yet. But there you go, some of the things that have me most excited from the latest release of Creative Cloud. Mainly, it's the fact that they focus on so many practical, day-to-day -day useful stuff that make me love them so much. So if you have CC, the updates are available now. If they don't show up at first, just log out and then back in. That's what I had to do and then they popped right up. But that's it and I'll see you guys next week when the only dry land that I've ever seen is underwater.